welcome back you beautiful people. We are Gemma and Campbell and this week we have just arrived in our bucket list destination of the Maldives. This is the most magical place in the world. Not what I was expecting and better than I could have ever hoped for. And so the time has finally come for our last stop of this big Asia adventure as we touch down in one of the world's most beautiful countries, the Maldives. For the next three weeks we will be exploring all that this bucket list destination has to offer from its surprisingly budget side to the extreme luxury that the Maldives is world famous for. If you're new around here and want to see what life in a beautiful Maldives is really like then hit that subscribe button and join the gang. But for now let's check back in at Kuala Lumpur where, as usual, our trip did not have the start that we had hoped for. So this is absolutely not an ideal start to our trip. We just drove an hour from KLCC all the way out to the airport and realised it is the completely wrong day. I don't know what's happened. Gemma's just into detective mode, trying to figure out what is going on. Are there any hotels nearby? Great, thank you. Thank you for your help. So, we've arrived at the airport, ready to board our flight, and apparently the flight has been changed until tomorrow. And they emailed us months ago. I don't remember that. Do you? Honestly, the number of things that I have absolutely messed up on this trip, I think I've got the dates wrong about six times so far. We have lost so much money. What a start to the trip. All we can really do for now is try and find somewhere to actually sleep for tonight and try again tomorrow. All right, double room, £65 with breakfast. It's not an adventure without a bit of drama, is it? I just wish there was no drama, man. I would rather have an adventure with no drama. Well, you know, not quite the view I had in mind to wake up to tomorrow morning. I was kind of picturing more a Maldivian beach. However, take two tomorrow, and all we can do is try again. Hopefully, we can actually make it to the Maldives. Okay, take two. Let's try this again. Literally the last time we're going to be flying out of Kuala Lumpur with just 20 kilograms in our hold luggage and they're doing a bag weigh at the actual check-in to departure. Why today? Of all days, I'm going for the um, tennis dad that's too hot and is also a drone enthusiast. Jingle pass. I'm going for the... It's a winter's day and... You've eaten too much. I've eaten too much. It's too much of Christmas dinner. Let's go. After all that, they didn't even weigh our bags. Nevertheless, next stop, Maldives. We made it. What a stress. That was the closest I've ever been to missing a flight. Oh my god. I mean, we've only been here since yesterday, and yet somehow we're still late for our flight. How does this happen? Are we going to all these? I'm so excited. So excited I almost missed my flight. That is so clever, because usually when you arrive into a country you don't actually have anywhere to get your sim delivered to, but here you just swipe it and it gives you it. That's good. So you just top it up online. Just even at night, look how clear that water is, man. That is incredible. So I think this is definitely the most unique airport that I have ever been to in the world, in the sense that it's the only one that actually goes straight from the terminal onto the sea. That's not a lake or anything like that. That is literally the sea and the only way to get to the main town of Mali is to get on a ferry. And welcome to our room for the night. It is very, very basic because we had to book it so last minute due to the flight cancellation, but we're just gonna be spending one night here and then we're catching a ferry first thing tomorrow morning across to our new island that we're very, very excited to go and check out. I can't wait till the morning to see what the Maldives actually looks like in the daylight, and I can't wait to show you guys when we wake up. So that was not the wake up that I was wanting this morning. Literally, we've been lying in bed relaxing, just talking about getting up for breakfast. Next minute, a siren starts wailing in the distance, and I'm thinking, oh my God, we're in the Maldives. Is that a tsunami? There's nowhere we can go. Jump up, throw our clothes on, we're about to run outside, and then it turns off. I think they were just testing the alarm system. If I had my watch on, my heart would possibly be about 200 right now. I literally, well, I was actually kind of relaxing. I was like, oh, what's that noise? And I was like, get up, get up. <laughs> oh my god, that is not the relaxing start to the Maldives I was hoping for. 
Okay, I don't know what I was actually expecting from Mali, but this is definitely not it. I was not expecting it to be such a big built-up city that is just so, so busy. It's literally nothing but just roads everywhere you go, and there's just so many people scooting around and driving around in their cars, and the place is just chaos. I always thought it was just gonna be a nice, kind of relaxed place to actually come and visit, but Mali so far is just so busy. It is a lot more built up than I thought it was going to be and it is a lot busier than I thought it was going to be. It's definitely got more of like the city on the sea vibes than I was expecting. I will say though, I thought the water looked clear last night when we first arrived in the airport. Today it is looking absolutely stunning. Like, it's so crystal clear. Now the only question is, which boat is it? Because there are so many boats here. I think we're here. So exciting. It's great. Let's get a private transfer to the hotel. The colour of the water here is like absolutely incredible, isn't it? It takes me back to Fiji. When we were in Fiji like what, 10 years ago now and now? Like that is what it reminds me of. It's yeah. being like out in like the middle of nowhere. All right, time for the most important question. Is the water actually warm? Let's see. Oh, that's nice. That's about the same temperature as I actually was in Thailand. I wasn't sure, but yeah, that is very, very nice. Definitely warmer than Scotland. I can't believe how close it is to just walk out our room and be on this like pristine beach with waters like that. Like, about a minute, less than a minute, and it is perfection. Literally, you can see there's like surf just over there. There's people surfing. There's some overwater bungalows just on the other island, which you could probably swim across to. And the water is just like so crystal clear and calm because it's in this kind of like lagoon area. It's just perfect, man. And you've got views like that. Like, it looks like something out of a postcard. So this has been all I've been waiting for. To be honest, since we arrived into Asia, I've just been looking for a beach that's not overrun with people, there's nice access to the water, and it is just so lovely and soft. Like, this is just perfect, man. So since our hotel is on the eastern side of the island, we thought we may as well finish off the day by wandering across to the western side. It only takes about five minutes, and uh, yeah, it's completely flat. It does seem that actually there's scooters on the island. Bicycle is also quite popular for getting around. However, you can actually just walk everywhere because it's really not that big an island. And this side this looks completely different to the other side, doesn't it? I know, there's not as much beach here unless there's a beach down behind those... Oh, that's very bright. <laughs> unless there's a beach down behind those uh, boulders. But this kind of looks more like the main road, actually. There's just like little dirt tracks where people can <laughs> nip around on their scooter. And then also just grass everywhere and trees. I actually love it. It's so beautiful, isn't it? Just look at that water. Can you actually believe that a place like this actually exists on our planet? Like, no words. Honestly, that water is the clearest thing I have ever seen. See, I guess first impressions of the Maldives, absolutely not what I was expecting and better than I could have ever hoped for. It is just like exceedingly beautiful, like one of the most beautiful places I have ever been on this planet. It was an absolute journey to get to here, but I think it was definitely worth it. A million times over. So I just wanted to quickly let you guys know that sign-ups are now open for our first ever Highlands to Hammocks group trip. If you want to join us for a week of unforgettable memories at the beautiful Cinque Terre coastline in Italy, just scan that QR code, it's going to be at the top left or right, right now, and we're expecting this to sell out very, very quickly, so don't miss out. Anyway, let's get back to this Maldives adventure. Good morning. Hello. There's so many cats around here. It's so cute. Not a bad spot for breakfast, eh? This is like perfection, isn't it? Literally a five second walk from our bedroom straight down onto the beach where we're gonna get a free breakfast included in this hotel. It's just like the best way to start off the day. One thing they also don't do here is hold back on the portion sizes. I think I've got about three eggs for breakfast. It looks delicious, I just don't know if I need this much food right before I go out snorkeling. I think I might sink.
Today is the day we are heading out on our first activity here in the Maldives. We are going out to a sandbank and then from there we're going to go for a little snorkel and see if we can see some turtles. And so this is our first stop, literally at this little sandbar that sits in the middle of nowhere. As you can see, there's no islands around us. And yeah, this is just so beautiful. The water, I feel like this is all I've said in this video. I should really be calling it like, what I think about Maldives water, but it is like, literally unbelievable. It's really hard to describe just how beautiful it is here. This is the most magical place in the world. I love it here so much. It really reminds me of that island we actually went to when we were doing our Komodo trip in Indonesia, just because of like this random sandbank in the middle of nowhere. But, because it's in the middle of the Maldives and not Indonesia, the exclusivity is just insane. There's six of us coming to enjoy this sandbank and there's no one else for miles around us. Like, I, I can't actually believe it. I feel like I need to like process that I'm not actually dreaming. All the photos that you see online of that blue water, it is true. It is actually like that. It's completely unfiltered. Yeah. Magical. Honestly, what a place to just come and lie in the sunshine. It is now time, however, we're gonna hop back on the boat. We're heading to our first snorkeling spot and fingers crossed we actually get to see some turtles today. Oh, wow. There's a stingray like right in front of the boat. That is incredible, absolutely incredible. I think this is one of the most unique snorkeling trips I've ever done. Just to be able to come to a place where the shelf plummets off into the ocean is just incredible. Apparently it goes down to about 25 meters deep. That is just insane. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very Thank you. <laughs> I think that just shows you how safe a place the Maldives is. I left my shoes on the beach that entire trip. There we are. Just where I left us. That was so much fun. We saw so many turtles, like I think about six in total. All just swimming around and we even saw a big shark. Not baby shark this time, big shark. Yeah, I'm actually so buzzing that we saw that shark because as you remember when we were in Thailand, we were around Maya Bay, we actually saw a little tiny one. This one was about twice the size of the one that we saw there. So it was very, very cool to see it up close in person. The coral reefs, however, it is quite sad that um, the state of them, they're not as like colorful as other ones that we've actually been to. And apparently that's a mixture between the tsunami that unfortunately hit here really bad in 2004. There's apparently also a disease that's spreading around the coral in this region, which is slowly killing it all off. And it's a reminder that we are so lucky to actually be able to come here now because in another 10 years, there might not even actually be any that much life in this region. So I would say if you are planning on coming to the Maldives, try and do it sooner rather than later because I think it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Saying that, however, it was an incredible trip. That sandbar is the place of absolute dreams. I want to move there tomorrow and build a little hut and live there. What's actually really interesting is on the northern side there's a place called Bikini Beach which is the only beach where you're actually allowed to wear bikinis funnily enough and that's because these islands are all very traditional Muslim settlements which means there's no alcohol and you're not allowed to wear bikinis just out and about in public. Something to bear in mind if you are wanting to book a place in the Maldives is make sure the island you're trying to book on has a bikini beach. And so this is what the southern end of the island looks like. It's actually completely different to what the northern end is which is kind of mostly trees, resorts, shops and beaches. Here we've got this basically a big road where cars and scooters are hurtling up and down it and it's actually possibly my favourite part of the island. It just feels so secluded out here. And we usually come down here first thing in the morning, don't we, to go for a little wander. And as well when the sunset looks good, we're trying to get out and wander down there as well at sunset. It's lovely. 
And so yeah, first impressions of the Maldives. Is it actually worth the hype? In love with this place. So in love. I feel like the only place I can compare it to is Fiji. Yeah. And it is just exclusive. Like it feels really quiet and beautiful, not bustling. Like you kind of feel like a lot of places can be. It's just really feels nice. very special to actually be here. Yeah. And the beauty is just like nothing in this world. It just everywhere you look, it just looks photoshopped. It yeah. is incredible. But I think it is like we didn't really realize how I guess affordable it could be to come to the Maldives. Like you can also find beautiful places that are a lot more affordable. Yeah. We're yeah. really buzzing to know that because it actually makes it a lot more realistic to come to a place that's this beautiful. Next week we're going to get even luckier. We're actually heading somewhere very, very nice. We're going to be giving you guys a tour just how much you can compare budget versus luxury in the Maldives. And we're actually checking into our first ever overwater villa, which I am so excited about. Me too. So excited. Too. If you want to see that, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. It just lets us know we're doing the right thing. And you want to see more videos just like this. And as always, we'll see you again in the next one. See ya.